How, how do you get new clients for the call centre industry? Um, two, three people have asked me in the last week, can I help them get clients? Clients are not easy to get hold of, and there's a reason for it. They get absolutely hammered all day long. Um, anybody that's doing call centre stuff will receive calls saying, we can do this, we can do that, all day long. What you need to do is build client relationships. Um, in the Philippines, your best target is actually Australia, not America. Um, Australia, there's a lot of guys doing stuff for virtual assistant work. There's a lot of people doing the accounting. Um, there's telemarketing for the solar water tanks. There's telemarketing for uh, the solar electric. There is insurance policies. There is remortgages. There's life insurance. There's a lot of stuff in Australia. You just need to hunt down the right people. Can I help you do it? The answer to that is no. You're going to have to do it yourself. Um, I'm trying to put you in the right direction. But you need to look at uh, things like LinkedIn. Get yourself on LinkedIn. Get your company profile up and running. Um, get some good information about your business. Because a lot of the brokers out there that rip people off don't own nothing they don't they're working from a space this big an, an office they don't have a call center as such if you've got some footage of this is my call center with me walking around this is my cubicles these are my people that work. you're already ahead of the game with a lot of the people you're competing against because what's happened is well i mean this is how i assume it happened over in india it was sort of like this at the top you got all your banks and everything went out to india then a year later these guys have got experience these call center agents so they then open their own call centers then a couple of years after that the guys that work at these call centers open more call centers and it's sort of gone down like that and it's been watered down but the quality is not really that good uh, from a lot of these places in India. That's why a lot of this stuff's gone back to the West. Um, I know, for example, HSBC moved some of their banking back to the UK after the amount of complaints. Because um, I know myself, I used to call the HSBC after 5 p.m. because I knew it would get a call center in Wales and not one in India. Because every time I dealt with the guys in India, I just hung the phone up because they were useless. Um, and I'm not, this, this isn't race, I'm talking about the fact that they didn't do what I asked them to do. Um, I know there's a lot of ISP stuff that you could pick up because a lot of it's been done badly. But the first thing you've got to do is get your first clients, build your reputation and start building on it. Don't just assume I've got a few clients, I'm going to sit and do this. Get that going, get, get those clients making you some money and then start building up. A lot of clients don't like discussing their names. For example, um, eBay operate out of Manila. Um, you've got Chase Bank, for example, they're in Cebu. And you've got some other, um, well, quite a lot of big companies operate out of the Philippines in different locations. You need to be aware that most of them will not let you stick their logo on your website because they don't want you advertising them. They don't like their clients knowing, their, well, their customers, knowing they offshore so much. So you have to be a bit diplomatic. Put yourself out there. Develop your business persona first. Don't worry about the rest of it. Just do it. You know, you don't need a big investment. And if you're doing this seriously and you've got like, I don't know, 40, 50 people working for you already, then you know where you're going. But if you're starting from a small outlet of four or five people, you've got to, you've got to be very, very careful because uh, a lot of the people out there will rip, will rip you off. Um, somebody emailed me the other day about the, the broker that would help them set up and they'd be making big money in a couple of months, just give us this payment, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, they rip you off. And I, I know you said it was an American, it was a Filipino who tried to do it to me, but the, you don't pay for anything up front. You don't need to. You've got enough risks as it is. Um, if your client doesn't pay you after your first week or second week, you've got your wages, your calling costs, your electric, your rental costs of the building, etc., etc. 
you don't need to pay anything up front. You're, already on, you're the guy taking the risk already. So be aware of this stuff. Um, but the first thing you need to do is set yourself up with a professional image. If you haven't got a professional image, you're going to struggle to get the bigger stuff in. Um, from the US side, you can pick up insurance policies, merchant processing for the credit card swipe machines. You can pick up the solar. I've got a client at the moment asking me to do solar with him. Um, I, what else can you pick up there? You've got the car insurance. Uh, there's, there's business insurance, you know, for insurance companies against being sued for X, Y, Z. There's insurance, there's companies... There's people in the Philippines already operating on that. There is the security alarm systems uh, for the US market. There's a lot of contracts there. What you have to be aware of though, a lot of people don't want to pay you an hourly rate because a lot of them are now saturated. So what you should be focusing on is not the sales too much if you can help it because that's where your risk will come from i i find it fluctuates because you although you're in profit it's it can be a bit of a roller coaster um the big money is involved uh, things like the virtual assistants doing bookkeeping doing reception services um doing promotional stuff for people doing the networking for people, managing their online presence, doing their LinkedIn accounts for their businesses, etc. That's the stuff that is bread and butter because that's week in, week out, week in, week out. No risk. It's not based on whether you sell or not. It's not. It is like week in, week out. You're managing this account, managing this account. You've got one person managing six different accounts, doing their emails, answering their Facebook page, etc., etc. That stuff is more reliable and stable. Also, you can develop it because you should be able to develop your guys' skill set that are working for you. Um, but that stuff is a bit harder to get hold of. If you're overseas at the moment, you need to work it where you are because all this is based on trust. Any sales is based on trust. When you see it on TV, they manipulate it. They've got the child, the mother, etc. The banks do it. The banks show the family, the loving family. We want to give you a mortgage. They don't show you the bit when they repossess your house, etc., when you can't pay it. They show you the loving parents, the kids, give them the, the new extension on the house for the, the kid to live in. We, we, we love you. We're, we're the bank. That's the image they sell. So you need to be aware you need to be selling yourself. Don't expect this stuff to, don't expect, got a website, work's going to come to me. I've never had anything come through my website, never. Um, people have asked have I got a website and then go and look at things on the website but they will always look for you personally what you'll find is they'll contact you on LinkedIn they'll contact you on things like guru.com um, I don't use freelancer or whatever it's called I find it's full of junk um, but you need to put yourself out there and search around get people that you know that may know people that will need a call centre for for various things and like i said the important bit here is is image get yourself promoted get yourself looking the part and also having staff that are capable of doing the job because that's the one thing that a lot of people struggle with is bad agents um you'll lose contracts faster than nothing else with bad agents because the thing in the u.s with telemarketing and stuff the clients can actually be sued, so they, they get a bit fussy on it. Um, all right, thanks for watching.